All right, everybody, we are locked in. We are dialed in. It is time. Did everybody like that intro? That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, welcome to Sunday Nights, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Tui. This is the All Things Fantasy Grounds Talk Show, and I'm here with my co-hosts, uh, Ms. Fury Fate and Mr. Leroon. Fury, how are you? I'm doing great. I had a nice weekend. I got to play a new game, so I'm super happy. Excellent. And Mr. Leroon? Hey, I'm doing good. Just uh, got done running a, a Halloween type game and kind of uh, working on our website still. So that's uh, what I've been up to. Cool. You, you guys played how many hours today? Uh, I think it was four. about four. Yeah, four, and it's not done, is it? Is it? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. We're almost there. We got like one more act to do. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to do the disclaimer, uh, just so everybody knows. I think those of you that have watched the show before know what's up, but if you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, but just to let you know that all things Fantasy Grounds talk show is meant to teach and help, but the opinions stated by the three of us on the show are not that of Smiteworks USA LLC or Fantasy Grounds, because we want to draw no comparison to the company. Even though I am an employee of the company, we do not stand on this show for the company in case I say fuck cock or shit you know that's not to be represented by them so uh god knows what these other two people are going to say so uh we're doing uh the results of our poll which we've probably been collecting info on for a month here is the poll let's refresh the latest results this was voting for your your favorite fantasy grounds extension and people who voted could vote for what was on the poll or they could add their own so we're going to go ahead and cover the top 10 uh, as voted, which I have actually over here, uh, right here. So guys, if you have questions uh, during the show, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, yeah, if you look in the chat, FCC, fuck, cut, cunt, that's right. <laughs> we're going to give away at least three prizes, and I will tell you what the prizes are now. And before we even start, we're going to give one away. So we like people that show up on time. And we want to give you give you a prize for, for being here, give you a chance to win. So the prizes we're going to give away are going to be the Haunt Fantasy Grounds module from the DMs Guild. Also, the Haunt 2. Uh, and also, just released yesterday, uh, another scary sort of insane themed thing, which is called The Madhouse of Tasha's Kiss uh, by Jeff Stevens and Rem and Remley Farr, uh, as converted by myself, and mostly Sean sides who is walking dude he did the bulk of the work there so that that is uh that is good on him so cool. i'm going to give those away in a row and so just be prepared everybody if you own one of these obviously don't enter the contest and if you want to have cheer a chance, bits cheer, cheer bits, bits in the stream <laughs> thanks for the cheer bits. cheer bits hey rp network thanks for the cheer uh if you want to win one in particular do not enter for the the other ones because we don't want to have, you know, we want to give three different people a chance to win here. So if you win one, then that means you got to sit out for the next for the next ones. So only enter. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the haunt right now. We're going to do the haunt two somewhere in the show, and then probably the madness of Tasha's kids at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this, and then we'll get into it. So this is the first one. It is for the haunt FG mod. I'm going to start it. The keyword is furied. We're going to put a two-minute timer on it. So if you want to enter in to win the haunt. Uh, and there's Fury. She's, she's entering. She's What if she wins? That'll be funny because it's keyword Fury. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Um, the top voted extension, which I knew was going to happen, is the 14-point font extension. And I, I have two Fantasy Grounds open here. And I'm just going to keep flipping back and forth between them. So if you look on the left, you'll see the difference. The smaller print is the regular print that you see, but the 14-point font extension makes things in the chat and in story entries bigger so that it's easier to read for old people like myself. Um, so Leroon and Fury, do you guys use 14-point font or you don't use it? I do. Um, it they, go ahead. I was gonna say it doesn't bother me. I can read either one, but I mean, if I was to to host a campaign, I would want you know everybody to be able to read without squinting or glasses. So I would use a fourteen point font. 
I was just gonna say they might as well call it the forty year old font because that's where most of us <laughs> are. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you can you can scale UI to make your screen accommodate more or less space, but that usually doesn't help with the writing. So I definitely that the fourteen point font was a lifesaver and it was originally done by I think Trenlo or somebody, but Gwydion went in and altered it and made it so that it used, uh, you know, uh, nicer fonts to be able to be a little bit more readable. In addition to being bigger, it's also more readable. So that is called a uh, fourteen-point font. And let's go. Let's go, and I'll show you the the. Uh, I'll go to the files and show you guys uh, extensions. So, and these are all available on the. Uh, they're all available on the forums and so you can search for them in, in the uh, in the 5e and the core rpg extensions so that one's called 14 point clear font um i don't imagine anybody would have questions about that but uh if you do let us know and then we'll pick a prize winner right now before we move on to the next one all right so the winner of the haunt is draw winner boom it is garth giant bane congratulations yes. to you, garth giant bane so Garth Giantbane, that's a name I don't recognize. Thanks for being a follower. I'm going to go ahead and put the Discord link in the chat. If you are not a member of my Discord, Garth Giantbane, just click on that link and come over to Discord. And what you need to do is PM me, send me a private message. Uh, just a little note. Hey, uh, hey, Rob, I won the haunt. And give me your DMs Guild email. And then after the show, I will send it out to you. Uh, so there you go, Garth Giant Bane, and I'm going to uh, I'm just going to write that down just in case. Garth Giant Bane. Cheer bits, cheer bits on the stream. Thanks for the cheer bits. Cheer bits, thanks, Master <laughs> Guns College. Cheer bits. The I'm trying to dime it so I don't cut you off. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I wasn't thought you the haunt tried... on sale recently? Uh, the PDF is on sale, yes, but the the Fantasy oh. Guns module is not. And I, I don't actually control that, but uh, the Haunt PDF is on sale. I think if I click on here, um, yeah, the PDF version is still on sale for three and a half bucks. And and this module is really awesome. I mean, it, it, it got uh, it got written up in the Dragon Plus magazine the from Wizards, and it's also now available in soft covers. As a matter of fact, I might. I might get the soft cover. How much is shipping on that? Let's just find out. Ooh. Does it tell? I don't want to spend. Cheer bits. They tell me. Cheer bits in the stream. Thanks for the cheer Drake, bits. Thanks for the cheer bits. Uh oh, Drake's trying to take down Bitboss. That's gonna do it. He's gonna take down Fantasy so. Guns College. So, but anyway, yeah, the the Haunt PDF is on sale for, um, for three fifty. Three forty two. And the Fantasy Grounds module is actually seven fifty. And the Haunt Two is not on sale because it's too new. Uh, I think when they do sales, they do not include titles that are less than sixty days old. So if we go to the Haunt Two, I bet you that's not on sale. Uh, let's find out. It's right here. Just where I was. Where the fuck I thought I saw it. Oh, so Rob, I'm going to bring up. Popular. Go ahead. I want to bring up the inevitable here. Um, okay. I get a lot of people ask me this question. Now, I know the answer, and we've talked about this before. But why is the Fantasy Ground so goddamn expensive compared to the PDF? Well, I didn't like that you put the words goddamn in there because <laughs> that, that makes it sound really bad. But Well, the, it's not. The, but it. The, 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 the question fantasy, happens a lot. Yeah, the Fantasy Grounds module is usually around 50% more than the PDF, at least the ones that I do, because that's what I'm establishing. That's Fantasy Grounds module is worth way more than a PDF, because think about what it does. You get, again, this, this would have been something I wish you would have prepped me for before the show, rather than putting me on this fucking spot during a live broadcast. Uh, this, this is uh, automation that you get. You're getting, you know, tokens and maps, and you're, you, I mean, just think about when you're playing Fantasy Grounds, any module, whether it's a WotC module or whatever, think about all the crap you get that you don't get just from a book or from a PDF. 
And so a lot of times, you know, the encounters are built for you. Uh, the tables are in there. I mean, it, and it also cheer bits. depends. Cheer bits. Cheer bits in the stream. Thanks Network for the cheer bits. bits. It also depends on what it is. Is it an adventure? Is it a book that has monsters? Is it something with subclasses and races? Or, you know, different types of things. But the automation that you cheer get... Bits. Cheer bits. Cheer bits in the stream. <laughs> Thanks for the cheer bits. The autom- ask me a question and then fucking cut me off. I love it. But it has money in it, so I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, the answer is that you... When, you're, when you get a Fantasy Grounds module, it's just of a higher value than what a PDF is worth. And that's just... I don't think that's just my opinion. I think that's that's fact. I think you're... I mean, when you compare what you're getting for what you're buying and what, how you're using it, it's just worth more. I My personal opinion is I think that the Fantasy Grounds module should be twice what the PDF costs. And in, in very rare cases, it is twice what the PDF is. But most often... It's 50% higher. So, like, for example, if there's a 495 PDF, the Fantasy Grounds module is going to be 750. It should be, like, 748 or 742 or something like that. But that's too weird of a price, so you just round it to 750. But a 995 PDF is going to be 1495 for Fantasy Grounds module. And that's that's just a precedent that I'm trying to establish. Uh there aren't that many other people doing Fantasy Grounds modules on DMs Guild other than me. I mean, there are a few out there. I'm not the only one. But all of the authors and creators that, that I work with, they all know that that price is going to be higher. Plus, you have to remember, if it's someone... if it's Usually, if there's a PDF, it's not me who created it. I only have one PDF that's an adventure on the entire DMs Guild, unknown whom. And by the way, Unknown Whom Part 2 will be publishing on Tuesday morning. Everybody stand by. Get, get crazy. Don't, don't panic. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I'll only have two modules that are PDFs that, I, that I've done. Everything else is created by other people. And you have to remember, when I do something for someone else, I'm only getting half of the profit. So I'm only getting half of half. I'm only getting 25% or 30% of, it depends on the deal. And then that's getting cut up by people that might be helping me. And then, you know, the author, uh, the, the original creator is only getting, you know, part of their half, you know, because because uh, one bookshelf takes 50% off the top every time, right? So people don't realize that all the work that goes into these and then the profits get cut up into these minute little little things and you're making seven cents a copy or whatever. So that, that also is one of the reasons why the price is a little higher for the Fantasy Grounds is because the profits are being divvied up, divvied up by more people than just the original person or the original team that made the adventure. So like in this case, the Haunt 2, the one we're looking at on the screen, Phil Beckwith and Travis get, uh, get, get part of that, and then I get another part of it. And uh, Gwydion, Gwydion should, but he refuses to take it because he helped me with that, but he... He's too nice. He tells me and wants me to keep it all. But that's a that's a unique example. But anyway, I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah, thank you, Rob, because I, I get asked that all the time. Yeah, so just I would like I, to I, the, set that the, straight. The short answer, the one sentence answer, other than my five minute explanation, is just to tell people it's a higher value product because of the automation and the things you get and what it does for you with your gameplay. So, if you can just convey that. You know, you're not just opening a PDF. You're you're opening something that's completely automated. And I, I'm so I, that was supposed to be one sentence and it ended up being four. But you know what I'm saying? You can yeah, you can say you. it quicker than I can. Yeah. So yeah. back to the extensions. Let's go to the actually. There is a question about the 14 point oh, yeah. uh, extension. Okay. Uh, Joe Numbers is asking: Is there anything which the 14 point ch- uh, changes that you don't care for? Uh, mess anything up or mess anything else up by using it? So there was an extension, or I think the original version with, before Gwydion changed it did do that, what he's talking about. It made things bigger in the combat tracker. You couldn't read them. And there, there were some things that got messed up. Uh, like here you'll see the notes field. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah there. Now let me go to the other one. Uh, but as of... As of this version, 
I don't think so, no. I don't think there's anything that gets messed up with this particular version. Uh, it used to be that way, but that I can think of in recent memory, I haven't ever opened anything and said, oh man, I can't read that. I just really recommend this 14-point font extension. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. Okay, another so, question. Uh, yeah. Diablo Bob wants to know, with all the toilet work, are you getting a heated seat at least? <laughs> so the work is not actually on the toilet itself. The toilet's just been removed and put into the tub because the work that's being done is the floor, not the toilet. Um, I had my water heater, for those of you that have been with me for a long time, you'll remember last November my water heater blew up. And I had to get my water heater replaced, and so they redid the floor. And when they redid the floor in November, they did not reseal the toilet properly. Cheer bits. But, cheer bits in the stream. Thanks for the cheer bits. <laughs> but I didn't notice that. I didn't notice it until, like, July. And then it didn't seem that anything was wrong, except the toilet seemed a little off skew. But then in September, I noticed that the floor started to bubble. So this is like 10 months went by before I even realized there was a problem. And then they came out here and dug up the floor and it, it was completely like it leaked out. You know, the water leaked out from the bottom of the toilet onto the into the floor and the subfloor and all the way down to like the, the bare bones of the house. And it had been doing that for 10 months. And so that's why it's taken these many days is they've, they've got like two heaters and a de dehumidifier. And hopefully you guys can't hear it. I, I can hear it, but the doors are closed. So you guys shouldn't be able to hear it on stream. But there's a giant like airplane fan blowing downward on my floor in there to try to dry it out. And, th and then uh, they'll, they'll be fixing it tomorrow. They're going to come at 730 in the morning and redo the floor. So hopefully tomorrow I can shit in my own house, everybody, <laughs> instead of having to hang a log off my ass. Or what is it? Hang, hang my ass over a log or whatever the hell yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, that that's what – so yeah, the toilet, there's nothing wrong with the toilet. As a matter of fact, I – because I'm so paranoid, I had a plumber out here a couple weeks ago to take the toilet off just to look to see if the toilet was the problem. And for him to take it off and look at it, tell me there's no problem and re-put it back on, 356 bucks. What? But yeah, but they're doing they're redoing the floor for free though, these people, because they it's under warranty and they fucked it up. They should pay me for a goddamn hotel for four nights, but they didn't. All right. <laughs> let's close one of these. We're, we're 20 minutes into the show. We've only done one. All right. So the, the second most popular was the message of the day. Now, I also really What's love this one. Because nobody reads it. Yeah, but it, this <laughs> this should be good for if you if you have players that aren't fucking hateful and they want to read your stuff that you post when you when you log on to the table. This is a good one to have. It's called Message of the Day. Uh, it will be in your... It, if you download the extension, it'll be M-O-T-D dot, e, dot extension. Uh, M-O-T-D, Message of the Day. And what happens is, if you have that installed, you can come right over here to your story entries. And in new, you can create a story entry called M-O-T-D. Now, it must be capitalized. It must be M-O-T-D. It has to be called exactly that. If you call it anything else, it won't work. So MOTD. But then you can put like welcome players. You know, please do not make a character until the DM says it's okay. And you can put whatever you want in this. This is this is just like a story entry. So you can put uh, you know links in it. Uh, you know you can put you can format it any way you want. But just to show you how that works. Let's go ahead. Oh, oh, here's a very important step. Once you do that, you have to go into the story entries. You have to find that entry, which is right here. So let me get rid of all this shit. We don't need this crap. It's just it's just blocking our way. We don't need it. 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 Whatever. I don't know what that is. We don't need any of this. Okay, so there it is. Now, you have to actually... Um, Open it up, and then you have to right-click, and you have to share the sheet. So in order for this to work, for your players to see it, the public indicator must be there. So it, it's got to say P there. And again, the way you do that, right-click, share sheet, right? So now what happens is anybody that signs on, let me just open another Fantasy Grounds, and I'll join game as local. 
uh, and then you'll see what happens. Local, local, join, and then could not join. Well, mother of hell. So it's because I have the wrong IP. So it's 33, okay. Uh, join game. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Why isn't it letting me on there? Well, that sucks. Why can't I join my own local damn thing? It's probably got something to do with I screwed it up in Canada or something. <laughs> uh, but but it is 10. It's 10 dot zero. Dot, uh, if I run the test, it's not going to work. Oh, it does work. Well, what the fuck? What the fuck, you guys? Come on. <laughs> 10 dot zero dot zero dot three three. It should work. No. All right. Let's try the alias. Does that work? Me goblin. Good one. I don't care if people know it. Don't log the on to my host. Don't don't log on to my table, everybody. I'll ban you if you do it. I won't ban you from the table. I'll ban you from Twitch. Don't do it. What was it again? <laughs> I I try local right. host. No, I did local local local, but it, it no, it only work. says local. Oh, you mean local host? Oh no, I don't think that has anything to do with it at all. If that's okay. true, I'm gonna shit myself. I don't think that has anything to do with it at all. It's one word. Yeah, no, it it but that the the name there doesn't have anything to do with it. You just have to have the right. Yeah, see, it doesn't matter. Uh, meet Goblin Good Wand. I never in a million years. Thought that I would have to test this before the show. Now is that going to work? Yeah, it seems that's that... going to work. Yep. So, I guess the reason local host doesn't work is there must be something wrong with my router or. Well, the chat's blowing us up. Local is... host is in address. So you're putting the uh, the password in the. Uh... No, no, Post I was doing address. it. I was doing it right. Trust me. See, it's not. It's not connecting. I'm just not able to connect. Okay. So something is wrong, and I don't want to take the time during the show to fix it. But suffice to say, when players log on, the this will pop up on their screen in the center, and it will be there. So you're just gonna have to trust me on that. I I am upset and not able to understand why I can't log on to my own machine here. Uh, or my hmm. own my own fantasy grounds. That's very upsetting. Um, so Sh Shadzar is trying to help, but that's okay. Rob does not want to listen to us. So sad. No, no. But I've <laughs> done this. So you saw that that was pre-populated, you guys. Uh... Oh, did I close <laughs> it? So, well, I mean, hey, this show's all about learning. So let's learn. So this is pre-populated. See this entry right down here? That's been there for a year. Local 10.0.0.33. And I've connected to my own table about a thousand times. So I know that works. It's just not working now. I already put local host in there as instructed. That didn't make any difference, you guys. So I know I know what I'm doing. It's just not working. And as proven by trying to connect with my own uh, thing there even though the test works it says success it's just still not working uh, the only thing I can think of is that I was jacking around with 18 different fantasy grounds tables open so let me close them all and then just try again and we'll see if it works that okay. sound fair everybody I don't know what they're saying your local IP address changed least time on IP space isn't forever yeah but huh. when I go here it tells me my 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 local address is 10.0.0.33. It says that. So let's log on to our All Things Fantasy Grounds table. And as that's doing that, let's open another one. The only thing I can think of is I did go do this thing recently where I changed my DNS to 1.1.1.1, which is a new thing now. That's the, that's the new thing the kids are doing because it makes your internet faster. That might have fucked it somehow. Yeah. But let's let this load up. Okay, then your network is something local isn't working for the IP didn't get refreshed.
Oh, Shad is saying switch it left to right? No, no, that's not right either. All right, let's see if we get it here. There, now it seems like it's going to work. So I just had to shut down and reboot. So you see, guys, this is working now. So locals on the left, and I was right. It just didn't work. So all you fuckers that were telling me I was wrong, you were wrong. That's it. Cheer bits. <laughs> so now when this comes up, we'll see the message of the day that the DM, because I'm logging in as a player now, so we'll see the message of the day pop up. I think the we'll probably end up getting the the character creation or the the character box right to that that always comes up for players, and then there's the message of the day. It puts it on top of whatever's back there. So whatever the message of the day, the players will go, "Hey, cool! Look, the DM has a message here for me. I'm not gonna fucking read it because I don't respect the DM. Let me just go to where my players are and let me open a character. Great, awesome. That's how it works. <laughs> cool. So this is back to the DM player. Okay, so let's go to the third extension that is very popular in the poll. Coming in third place was the DOE sound extension. So in order to in order to use the DOE sound extension, you have to also have installed the DOE base extension. So DOE base and then DOE sound, and DOE is Deluxe Oz extension, and as you guys know, uh, unless you're new, you've heard of Deluxe Oz, and he's got many, many extensions, uh, even more than what I have here. He's got like maybe 15 of them or more, And uh, but the sound one's very popular, so if you have that installed, you will get an extra button called sound, which I'm clicking right here, and if you open the sounds, uh, it's a whole different thing where you can set up your sounds, you can do mini boards, and it's very, very complicated, so we're not going to have a whole seminar. As a matter of fact, we did a show. If you want to know about that, that specifically, you can go back and watch our show, uh, and that was number episode 13. You can go watch episode 13 of this show and see all about that extension, uh, but suffice to say, it works and uh, you can get, uh, so like rolling a one would play a sound. Now that should open Sirenscape. Oh, unless I don't have sounds on. Yes, you have to go into the options and turn sounds on. Now if I click on that, it should open Sirenscape, which it is doing. And uh, the sounds obviously don't need Sirenscape, but that's the best way to use them. And then as soon as this program opens, it's going to give us some kind of sound that whatever rolling a one is. I'm assuming it's going to be sad horn or oh no or something, one of those sounds. We'll see what it ends up being here. <laughs> it should play any second. And it was a laser. Why was it a laser? I don't know. I don't know why it was a laser, but that's what it was said. And then I think there was a couple other uh, ones in here. Uh, copy of handgun. Oh, and this is opening up, this is probably opening up, oh, I closed Sirenscape because I'm an idiot, that's what happened. Yeah, so Sirenscape should have been left open and it would have just made it instantly. But that's kind of cool, if you if you forgot to open Sirenscape or you closed it like I did, it'll just reopen it. So it's going to be delayed, obviously, because it takes time for the process, or for the uh, software to, to load up, but instead of closing it, I'll just leave it open. That's going to be a gunshot sound as soon as it... And then this one is cool sound. I don't know what it is. Doesn't seem that it's anything. But anyway, so... Oh, there we go. Oh, that's just... That's what gets used for a magic missile. So, uh... Yeah, and you can program any sounds. And then, of course... If you go to the DMs, go. If you want sounds for everything in the game, you can you can get the sounds module that I have on the DMs go. That has like 500 sounds in it, and like all the spells and rolling for hitting and missing with your weapons and shooting arrows and swinging swords and rolling initiative and and critting and fumbling and falling asleep and going prone and all that stuff. It's it's all in there. But that 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 
extension is really cool. And if, you, if you're watching us going, what the hell? I don't know about any of this. Then all you have to do is download his extension. And if you download that extension, he's also got... Um, he's got a sound manual and you can open that up in your library and you'll be able to go right here and just start reading exactly how it works, what it does. Um, he's got rule set compatibilities. He's got extension compatibilities, tells you what the dependencies are. He's got, you know, usage. I mean, he, he it's quite extensive, all this stuff he wrote just for that extension. So it's all right there and it's all free for you guys to get if you want it. And again, you would need to have the DOE sound and the DOE bass. All of his extensions, Deluxe Oz extensions, have to have the bass for any of the other ones to work. Uh, so there you go. That was number three. Did anybody ask questions about that? Uh, more uh, comments than anything. Okay, comments are good. That's all right. All right. Uh, since we do the fifth one, we'll give away another prize. So the next one is the author extension. Now, this is crazy. I love the author extension. So if you have the author extension, uh, this is more for people who are making modules. A um, couple things I'd like to showcase about this is that the author extension is meant to be able to create a reference manual for your uh, adventure or what are, or it doesn't have to be adventure it could be anything that you're exporting so if you go slash export it brings this up right so what celestian has done with the author extension is if you click this a it'll check mark all of those things instead of having to do what i've been doing for three fucking years which is go check 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 all the way fucking down it'll just check them or uncheck them all at once and that's just, that's the tip of the iceberg of what this thing does. Um, it will also include reference manual here, which is not normally in Fantasy Grounds. Uh, you cannot export reference manuals in Fantasy Grounds, but with the author extension, you can absolutely do that. And we won't go too much into uh, exactly how it works uh, because we actually had a show about it, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, did we not? I think so. I think Celestian was on show 29, and I believe mm -hmm. we co covered the author extension during that episode, so you can go back and watch that. Also, if you go to the Fantasy Grounds uh, forums and look for the author extension, which is just called uh, author, it's just called author.ext, his instructions in the forums are excellent, and he's updated that as recently as yesterday uh, because he, he, he and I... Uh, uh, had a, a discussion about it yesterday and uh yeah so his his instructions are excellent and the only thing that you do is when you have story entries you just put them all into chapters and if you if you've had fantasy grounds for more than two years you can remember that when you open story entries there used to be down here at the bottom there used to be chapter tabs going across and they changed that to groups up here now but it used to be chapter tabs going all the way across and you kind of had to do it that way now you can put them in groups or not, but if you put stuff in groups and you export it and you check reference manual in Fantasy Grounds, you would be able to do something like this. So here's Unknown Tomb 2 that's publishing Tuesday. And if I open that up and go to reference manual, you see the whole thing's here. And it's pretty cool because you can do inline images just like that. You know, when I go down to chapter one and I start getting to where there's maps or whatever in there, um, the map is there. You click on it, it opens the real map. Spoiler. Uh, you know, yeah, so it's really cool. You can do a reference manual just like the Watsi books. And it's really cool. And all you have to do is follow his instructions and use this uh, export the same way you would and just check on you know, reference manual, and it's going to put that in there for you, and as well as all the other stuff. So it's really nice and really cool. And there's, if you have questions about that, you should definitely, um, yeah, I, I did, a Drake. request. I, I did show, I, I did show the click a Drake. I'll hmm. show it again. Um, but yeah, if you guys have questions about that, the best thing to do is go and download it, and then 
there's the A, click in the A right there. Uh, go and download it and just test it out. Just make a story with some chapters and, and put some graphics in it and, you know, see, and just put a stat block or whatever and export it and see what you get. It's pretty nice. So Joe Numbers has a question. Yeah. Uh, this kind of goes back to the sound thing. Do you need to reset up for each campaign or do they transfer between them? So for your settings, for your uh, the DOE, for the sound? So it, it depends on what you're talking about there. The sound extension will work with any campaign. But if you make certain things do certain sounds, <coughs> then no, you do have to transfer it. However, watch this. Uh, let me go back to export. He has built in that if you have the sounds, part of what you can export here now is the auto sounds, the chat sounds, and the mini board. So you could just export those into a mod file and then, oh, and then go to your other campaign, open that mod file, and get that information out. So he did make it easy. And that's all covered in the instructions. So yeah, Joe's question, I've never personally done that, but it can be done. Um, I, I haven't had occasion to, to have to do it yet, but that is a good thought, because if you set up a bunch of cool sounds that you wanted, and then you wanted to always be able to use those in every different campaign, you could just export them like that. Yeah, so that's a good question. Thanks, Joe. Uh, okay, table import. So there's there's two there's two table import and CSV table parser, but they are different. Table import is if you uh, if you have if you have that installed, which I believe it's just called table import. Yeah, there it is. Table import dot extension. What this allows you to do is when you want to make a new table. You can go down here and create new table, and it's going to give you a blue arrow, which you don't normally see. So this blue arrow right here, you click on that. And then what you do is you just go find a list. Like, let's say I want to make a table of these extensions. I'm just going to copy this list. Uh, actually, I'm going to copy the title, too. So the way this one works is you paste it in. So the first line is the title, and then the next 10 are the things that you want in the table and then you just click import and you fucking just made a table look at that shit imagine yeah. how imagine how long that would have took me to type that all in and type these numbers in and type all those in individually i just did that in two seconds so that is a very very powerful uh tool and it's got it some other things you can do with it but that's the basic way to use it <coughs> and imagine if you want to make a d100 table and it had a hundred things all you'd have to do is go find a list, type in your 100 things, copy it in, and boom, it's done. That's it. It's over. Didn't so that, someone create one of those for you, Rob? Um, that that one or, was – that's probably Celestian, too. He, he's done everything that's saved me time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, table, uh, table import was done by Celestian, and CSV table parser, I think, was done by uh, – by, by Moondog or, or Trenlo or one of those guys. I can't remember. It's so hard for me to remember shit. But that's a really cool one and, and uh, fifth popularity there. So uh, let's give away another prize. How about that? Let's do it. This time... Do it. We're going to do it. This time the keyword is going to be Lerun because that's how we do it here. This is going to be the Haunt 2. So again, guys, I'm going to run the contest... Uh, if you want to win the Haunt 2, go ahead and enter. We will ask uh, Garth, the previous winter, to not enter this time because he's already won. But the rest of you can enter, and the keyword is Lerun. you got to spell it right. It's exclamation L-A-E-R-U-N, and it looks like a couple people are entering. So while you guys are entering for that, we'll look at Window Saver. Now, Window Saver, I will have to demonstrate. So, Window Saver is installed. Oh, I should have just left that open. Uh, what was it? I'll just leave a bunch of these open. So, you know when you log on Fantasy Grounds, it just gives you a brand new table. However, if you have Window Saver installed, 
then when you log off Fantasy Grounds and you come back into that campaign, which we will do now, all the windows that you had open when you left will be there still. And it, that's a fantastic way, especially if it's a game and you're in the middle of a combat and you got the map open, you got the combat track open, you got the story entry open, maybe you got a couple NPC stat blocks, and you're just like, and you've got to quit the game. Like, it's an emergency. we got to stop now, everybody. Or it's 9 o'clock and that's the time you stop and it's fucking over like I do with my games. <laughs> then you just tell everybody, all right, see you next week, and you close Fantasy Grounds. And then when you reopen it the next time, all the windows you had open and all and all the places where they were, they'll all just be exactly still there. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised that wasn't higher on the list. So if you click, it's going to say, Window Saver, do you want to open all the windows you had? This is terrible, by the way. This fucking gray spotted, I can't even read it. But I know what it says. If you say no, it'll just go to a blank. It'll just give you this thing. But if you say yes, it's going to give you back all the windows you had. <coughs> Man, my throat getting dry because I'm talking too much. Quit dying. <laughs> Stay alive, Rob. I need to quit dying. <laughs> so uh, so that's a cool one, and that was, I think, sixth on the list. Yeah. And that one is called, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Window Saver, right down here at the bottom. Windowsaver.ext. And again, all extensions are Great. available on Fantasy Grounds College. Not Fantasy Grounds College, Fantasy uh, Grounds Forums. Because forums, uh, Drake PD was saying, uh, you have to know the commands though, uh, the slash WSX safe and then the name. No, absolutely not. If you have that extension installed, all you have to do is close Fantasy Grounds and it saves everything for you. That's the beauty of it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's it, does all that for you. So, all right, here we go. The winner. Says, no oh, go ahead. To be part of uh, FGU by default. Yeah, I agree. It does. Or at least they should have a toggle. I can't imagine anybody that wouldn't want it to be like why what would be the reason you would have to not want your previous windows open when you log back in? I don't I don't understand why anybody wouldn't want that. But yeah, I agree. Uh Draw winner, here it is. The Haunt 2 goes to Digital Profit. Nice. So nice. Digital Profit, congrats. Uh I don't recognize Digital Profit as being a member of my Discord, so in case that is true, I'm going to put the link in the chat. So Digital Profit, go ahead and click on that link and go to my Discord and send me a private message. And in that private message, just say, hey, I won the – oh, I is, he says. Uh, so yeah, so PM me and say you won the Haunt 2 and give me your DMs Guild email. People always forget that. They, I, I get these PMs that say, I won. Nothing else. Just I won. And I'm like, good for you. You're not getting shit because you didn't follow any instructions. <laughs> uh, but yeah, give me your DMs Guild email and I will get you the haunt to... I usually do chase people down if they f don't do it, but I, it aggravates me. So at the end of the show, we'll give away... This is the haunt too. we just gave away. And then at the end of the show, we'll give away this one. The Madhouse of Tasha's Kiss. Um, it's creepy, man. It's creepy. Look at that shit. That's creepy. Fantasy Grounds Very logo kind of decreeps it a little bit, but you know, you gotta put it on there. So, <laughs> all right, let's go to the next one. Advanced effects. Now, this is interesting. This is an interesting extension. Uh, not a lot of people know about it, I think, but apparently some people do because it was voted the seventh most popular. So let's go to an item. Let's just open up the armband flail here from Wayfinder's Guide. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I need to go to a... I, it has to be a new item. Okay, so let me just copy any old item. See if I can get it in new. All right. So you have to be able to edit. But notice when I open this that there are effects features here. So I can add an effect in here. And I can say, I can add it just like I would in, you know, my effects coding packages. So I can say that, let's say this, this item does what? I don't know, Layroon, make something up. What, what does this item do that needs an effect? Okay, it adds plus one to your armor class. Okay. And it does force damage. 
So the armband flail. Okay, so I'm there you it's go. More like a force field. So you go, uh, you add AC one damage type equals force into the into the uh, you know the whatever the description right there, and now you huh? see that this um, this effect is now part of this item. So when you close it, it's there. Now, I'm not going to do a whole class on how this all works because you can just go to the extension and read about it. And I don't use it, actually. I have used it before, but I, I don't use it. But this is kind of a way that you can, like, you, the codes that I'm famous for that I've made that go on the actions tab of the character sheet, this is a form of that that will work with items but are within the item. So you, you'd, you'd have to go and you'd have to program each one of these individually for each item that you want to do it. But it can be very powerful because, uh, A, if you don't want to buy my codes and you'd rather do each individual one yourself, you can do it that way. And this way they're in the item rather than the, the uh, actions tab. But um, as far as the intricacies of how to use that, I'll leave that to anybody that wants to go read about it. Uh, because I'm not an expert on exactly how that works. I did use it a few times, and I obviously left the extension installed, so I, I liked it. But um, that's about the most I can say about that one. And guys, if you have questions on this one, I apologize. Probably better than asking me would be to actually go read that forum entry. And again, that's called... Uh, where is it in here? Uh, advanced Effects. It's called Advanced Effects. And it might work with more than items, but as far as I know, I think it just works with items. So that's about all the information I have on that particular one. Uh, okay, so the next one that was most popular, which I guess would be number eight, is Advanced Combat. Now, Advanced Combat, this is crazy. This guy that made this, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know him personally, but it, it's out there. I mean, it, it's got a lot of shit. And... To show examples in, in Fantasy Grounds almost doesn't do it justice. I think that the best thing to do is kind of just look at a couple of what he says uh, on the Fantasy Grounds forums. And he spells combat with a K. So let's go to, let's go to this extension, and you can just see uh, what he's uh, said about This is done by Ken L., and it is a very advanced combat thing that does the following. It improves status icons, uh, effect application, contextual mini effect window, integrated layers, extensions. Uh, if you use the extensions for the integrated layers, it, you, it follows that. Uh, health and death indicator overlays, save indicators, combat snapping, height management. So if you're a flying character or you elevate or you you know do anything, you can it's got height things map tokens, map ping. You can ping on a map, like, hey, everybody, meet me here. It's pretty cool. NPC ID. So here he's got, um, you know, sort of gifs about what uh, he's showing as an example here. These icon statuses are better. Um, and again, this is a pretty complicated deal. And I, I downloaded it, and I looked at it, and uh, it, it, is, it is really fantastic. Some things in it might not thrill some users, though, because it, it just, you know, it obviously takes a long time to get used to how he's done stuff here. Um, but he does a pretty good explanation of walking you through, like, how he's making all these things happen, and he gives you visual examples. So, again, I'm not going to have a seminar on, on here. Uh, we might actually see if we can get him uh, as a guest, because if he wants Great to come idea. on, as a, this is a whole show. That he could do, and I'm sure people would love it. Map ping is really cool. That's probably my favorite thing. Is uh, show notes. Does, does he show notes? Yeah. So he's showing. Yeah. So then he you ping a map, and all the players get your ping on their maps. I mean that that's a thing that people have been screaming about. I don't know how the hell he figured that out, but um, uh, he did. So you know, on and on and on, and uh, it's it's had a few bugs and. You know, but just like anything else, people have reported like, hey, this doesn't work right for me. And he goes and checks it and 
And uh, I mean, it's just really fantastic. I can't, I can't say enough about it. And we absolutely do need to reach out to him because we could do an entire episode just on this extension. Great uh, I'm idea. trying to look to see if he is, does he have it here or is it on GitHub? I can't remember. Let's see. Uh, I think it's on GitHub. And I, I never, I'm too, I'm an old person. I don't know how to use GitHub. You go there and you download it. But anyway, I downloaded it and it's called, um, it's called, where is it? Advanced Combat. Does anybody see it? I don't see it. Fury, do you have to see it before I do? What's it called? Advanced Combat 5e Master. Oh, it's in a folder. That's why. It's uh, it's not. It's it's here. And I think because okay. it has, it's got a lot of stuff in it. So I might have unzipped it for some reason. But anyway, that's called uh, Advanced Combat with a K 5e Master. So uh, yeah, I do highly recommend checking that out to see if it's something that you like. And then we'll we'll put that on the list. As a matter of fact, let me make a note about that uh, over here for an idea. For a couple the show. comments that says he's working on uh, part two, and that there's one for 5e and one for Pathfinder. Oh, awesome! Yeah, uh, advanced combat. Okay, so I have that down to as a show idea. So we'll try and see if we can get him on. Um, okay, so uh, and uh, there's yeah, there's like I said, I can't, I can't. I mean, I've repeated it a couple times, but there's so much to say about that that it could just be forever. Uh, okay, so we did that one. That was number eight. The ninth most popular was mood lighting. Okay, so mood lighting, uh, if you, and that's just, I think it's just called mood lighting. I'm pretty sure. Yep, mood lighting right here. Mood lighting extension. If you have that in there, uh, you know, everybody knows about these four, uh, you know, nighttime, it's like campfire, and the other one is, I think, forest. You can change all your color scheme back there. And then one of the Friday tips of the day was you can actually do it by uh, ASCII code or whatever that's called. The, the six digit, you know, like FFFF or 00187. Hex code or whatever. Hex code, yeah. But this mood lighting extension, uh, let's see. Is it? Yeah, mood. So let's see. Uh, slash mood, mood jungle. Mood question mark? Is that, does that work? No, there's one. I forget now. There's there's something you type in that you that'll give you all of the let's see mood. Whoops, I touched the screen. I forget. I keep forgetting <laughs> I have touch screen. I keep. Oh my god, I gotta stop doing that. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> mood message mood and message. Oh, lighting is the is the hex thing. Uh, so mood. Yeah, maybe if I try mood and then does it give me, is it tell me, mm, okay, well, maybe somebody in chat knows. Uh, nope, it's not that either. Which one? Let's see, mood, night. Oh, it's not, not letting me do any of them now. Hmm. Cave. Wow, why isn't it working? What the hell? All right, well, if you don't, if, if the fucking host doesn't know how to use it, and neither one of his t two co-hosts knows how to use it, we just go look it up. Fantasy Grounds extension. Oh, no, mood lighting extension. Because it's pretty funny. You, you can have it. Uh, oh, great. That doesn't show up anywhere. Yeah, here it is. We're all saying it's slash ml. Uh, it's ml, not not mood. Slash ml. There you go. Oh no, that's not it's ml question mark. Oh, slash ml night. Well, what the hell? Is it possible I just don't have it installed? That can't be right. Let's just go back out and double check. I like how the screen's still green there. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> okay. Load campaign. 
find mood lighting. Oh, because I didn't have it at the fuck. Well, there you go. Uh, uh. No wonder it wasn't working. So maybe if you install the extension, then it works. That's <laughs> that's how you do it, you guys. I wish I could add oh. a mood to the encounter when you hit the NPC in the combat tracker. You know, <laughs> Drake, I'll bet you there's an extension that can be made for that. You you can do almost anything your mind can conceive of if you know how to ask Lua and XML and all these other languages that Fantasy Grounds has written in to do it. Wish there was but, a way to load extensions without reloading the interface. That yes, would be huge. That, that would be huge, too. I wonder if that's a... I don't even know. I don't know jack about Unity or how that works, but that, that could be a thing. Okay, so now let's try this. There we go. So if you type slash ML, it'll give you the instructions. And there are a lot of them. Welcome to Mood Lighting. You can do Mood Lighting Help, Mood Lighting About, blah, 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 right? So there's all these different ones. And here, here's all the ones you can use. Afternoon, Blood Moon, Blue Moon, Bog, Campfire, on and on and on. And then there is a thing. So, like, let me just do one. I'll do uh, Moonlighting Bog. So it says, you are in a bog. Uh, and then it changes the color scheme. And then you can do, like, ML Sandstorm. And it changes it. There is a Violent Sandstorm. So that's kind of cool. So there's also a thing that you can do in here. That's kind of funny. Uh, where is it? ML message funny. So instead of these sort of mundane, you can go ML message funny. And then when you do a mood, it gives you a funny message. ML cave didn't your mother ever tell you not to go into dark caves with strangers? <laughs> it just gives you a funny message. <laughs> ML um, Lake. Is Lake one? This is the biggest lake you've ever seen. It's also probably the deepest. Whatever you do, don't give a goddamn crustaceous from the Paleozoic era no free, f no tree fitty. No tree fitty. <laughs> See, it's funny. It's just, I don't know how to read. That's the problem. So anyway, mood lighting, everybody. Uh, let's see. Does anybody want me to try a specific one? Shadow. What is that? ML shadow. It doesn't seem that changed very much. ML prismatic. He's got a lot of them in here. Prismatic. Unknown command. I thought he does have shadow in there. Yeah, but it, it didn't shadow. I probably spelled it wrong is what happened. Mood lighting, unknown mood command. Try ML help. Bad command, shadow. What the fuck are you talking about? Shadow's right there. Where, where'd it go? Oh, valid portal colors are... Oh, okay, so there must be a portal thing. See, I didn't even know about that. What the fuck? Okay, uh, uh ocean. 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 Okay, ML. Yeah. Ocean. So there's a thing you can do with portals. Or, oh, yeah, cool. Look at that. Sailing on the ocean is fantastic. What's a little vomit among friends? But there's a portal thing and, a, and like a lava thing. M ML portal indigo. You turn on indigo portal lighting. Okay, so let's try ML portal shadow. I think we're having too much fun with this now. Yeah, we're, we're spending too much time on mood lighting. Anyways, mood lighting, everybody. And it's called yeah. mood lighting. There you go. And if you install it, it'll work. Very good. Uh, that mood thing Wait, was just... What does the shadow say? Shadow says, you stand in the, in the penumbra of a shadow portal born of the ancient and arcane weave. It probably leads to a dismal place that may not be totally unlike your social life. <laughs> Fuck, that's funny. Uh-huh. All right, let's go to the last one, which remember the table maker. This is the this is the CVS table parser. So when you have this loaded, it it loads this thing here up on the top 
right, it makes this little icon here, and you open it up. And, of course, it's so fucking hard to read, you can't read that. So I'm just going to tell you what it does. So what you would do is, this, this is something that you can make an inline table with in a story entry. So let's just go here to new story and go here. And what you do is you type hashtag table hashtag. And you put that where you want the table to be. And then you you just need a uh, just need a comma delimited delimited uh, thing. And I'll just do one in a in a simple text document here. Go. Yeah. And you know you can do this in a spreadsheet or a Word document or wherever you want to do it. So let's just do um, 1D10, uh, or no, yeah, let's do 1D4, uh, and then we're doing race. And so we'll yep. do 1, comma, human, 2, comma, elf, uh yeah, let's make it a little more complicated. Let's do race and class. So human, cleric, uh, elf, druid. Three is going to be, um, yeah, like I don't know any of these races. <laughs> ASMR, I probably spelled that wrong. ASMR, fighter. Four is dragonborn. Wizard. Wizard, thank you. <coughs> so, don't die. So, um, you, cop you copy that into the clipboard, and then when you come over here, if you've got that table thing in there, all you have to do is convert clipboard, and it builds that table there. Boom. And you just go up here, bold that, and you're done. There it is. So, I mean, Sweet. think about how much time you're going to save by not... The other way to build this table is to... Is to is to have all that info in there without the commas, you know, and then do Control Six and then Tab and then go like over here and then Tab and, and then uh, Control Tab and then you gotta and it's a fucking nightmare. And so you saw how fast I did that. I mean, I just go over here, make sure put table hashtag table and then click convert. Oh, and I probably have to re recopy it but yeah i mean i'm just doing it again but boom there you go and if it does sometimes that happens it doesn't work so you might have to close the entry and reopen it and then do it so it's kind of finicky sometimes but imagine the work you'd save if you were doing some kind of table that had 12 columns and 18 rows and i mean you'd just be really fast some people don't really understand how the commas work so the commas make your columns and then each row will will create your row. Right. Uh, when so, I first started using it, I was confused. I was like, "What the hell?" Yeah, and it. I think it says that. I mean, it says it in the instructions on the forum entry, and it also says it here. But whoever, I think this was made by James Holloway. But this this is horrible. I mean, you can't fucking read it. But I think if we had the five E theme, you know, the white the white one with the dragon heads, I think you can read it in there. And sometimes when people make stuff, they don't. They don't think to themselves, well, what about if they open it in a different thing? So, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of curious. That's the last one, so we can we can go over here and test it anyway. But um, but it is a really cool thing, and I use that all the time. Uh, what's that called? D&D &D theme? What is that called? 5e theme. Wizards. Here Wizards. I use that. I use both those table things all the time. I mean, just tables and tables and tables. And talk about a time saver. I mean, it's really great. Uh, so while we're waiting for that to load, let's load up the last prize. Let's load it up. Do it. Let's do it. The keyword is going to be Rob Tui. And this one is going to be for the Madhouse of Tasha's Kiss, which was just released yesterday. It is a one-shot a three to five hour adventure for a party of four to five characters from levels three to ten, and it is scaled. So you can play, you can basically drop this almost to any campaign right in the middle, or you can play it for like a Halloween thing or whatever. It's pretty cool. So, uh, keyword Rob Tui, everybody, get in. Two minutes, everybody's entering. And then we'll go over here and we'll see if this uh, thing worked. 
And of course, Fantasy Grounds is frozen because that's what it does when you switch away from the application and come back. You have to wait five seconds now. I don't know what the hell is going on all the time with that shit. Uh, yeah, so see, you can read it here because it's black and white, basically. Uh, to first open the window with the formatted text field, format text control, or the roll table window that you want to insert the table info. Then if it's a formatted text you want to insert into the type hashtag table hashtag where you want the table on its own line. If it is a roll table, do nothing. Then copy the contents to the C SB into, oh wow, it goes way down. Holy shit, look at this. Uh, into the clipboard, control A, then control C, CSV file. Then hit the button below. Tables may need additional formatting after conversion. Yeah, like you might have to bold the thing or whatever the hell, right? So that's cool. So guys, if you have questions uh, about this or anything else, go ahead and ask them. That's what we're here for. Also, somebody did say something about 5e pickup games before the show. They were asking about that, and so I think that was Diablo Bob, if you're here. Uh, you can ask me whatever question you had about that. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, 5e pickup games is something that we ran last year. We did 109 episodes of it, 119 episodes of it, and it's a it's just a game where you can show up and play. You don't have to have any preparation you don't have to sign up. You just go. You just show up and play, and uh, it was pretty f successful for about ten months, and then it just died. So I, I, I snuffed the life out of it, and now we're gonna have uh, we're gonna bring it back on Wednesday nights as a trial basis uh, until Gwydion wants to do more Pathfinder two play tests. So if you're interested, just show up at uh, a few minutes before six p.m. on Wednesday to the stream, and. Uh, you can get in. You don't have to make a character in advance. And if you're already a 5e pickup game player, then you already know what the deal is. You just uh, show up and use one of your characters and we play. And McClancy, 10,006, is going to be DMing this Wednesday night. Uh, so first day back is not even me. I'm going to be a player instead of a DM. So that'll be fun. He's got something set up. So Let's Drake see, uh, asked a question to you, Rob. Yeah. Drake it's a says, little bit unrelated. That's all right. Will you show us your Dungeon Master's bundle, how it works like a store? I think we already kind oh, of did that. He's talking about, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about this thing. The the, the, the Rob yeah. Tui, is this what he's talking about? The Rob Tui module organizer, is that what, he's, is that what you're talking about, Drake? So the, the Rob Tui module organizer is available for free. Uh, you can get it on the forums, wherever the hell it was. I put that most, most likely in the 5e section. But you can also get it on my Discord in the DMs Guild updates. Uh, this this is everything. Whenever I update something, I put it here so people can know. And then that thing's downloadable right here. So this is something that's for the DMs Guild, but it's not on the DMs Guild. So it's kind of an organizer. So... Uh, that, he hasn't responded yet, if that's what he's looking for, but I'm hoping that's what he's looking for. So you go here, and you open up this thing, and you open up the instructions, and uh, it, it, it tells you what it is, and then basically it's every module that I've ever made. And uh, is it for the DM? Is it for the player? Uh, is it for both? Is it a package? And if you, if you're like, well, he's got, you know, Adventure Unknown, whom, uh, Fantasy Ground Sounds, Fantasy Ground Sounds, what's that? You click on it, and it'll open it in your library. If you have the module, it'll open it for you. If you don't, it'll, it won't, because you don't own it. And then, um, it kind of explains what you do here, um, Here's the flow chart of everything I've done. So whatever I've made, like say for example, uh, if you buy the, the Fantasy Grounds class features effects coding, it'll show you that that's actually part of the Fantasy Grounds coding package, which is part of the Complete Works 2017, which is part of the everything Rob Tui sale. So you know, you, if you buy this, you get all this. And if you buy this, 
uh, well, no, this is items published in 2018. So at basically in a couple more months, at the end of December, I'm going to have to redo this entire flow chart, pain in the ass. And uh, But yeah, this basically explains everything I've ever done because a lot of people are like, damn, I have so much of your stuff, but I don't know what I'm missing. And what the hell, man? So you can just go uh, open this up. And again, it's right here in Discord. If you're on my Discord, it's in the DM Guild Updates channel. And if you go to Fantasy Grounds forums, uh, here I'll just I'll link that in the chat. I'll just find it. Uh, let's see, Rob what? Chewy modules. I, I fuck I don't know what's it called. Fantasy Grounds. And a lot of you guys, I don't know if you know, but uh, Rob made videos on every single item that he's made. Just about the stuff yeah, that he right. authored. <clears throat> he has a playlist. If you go here, uh, it says unfinished, but I think it is finished now. I have to change it. If you if you open this up, you'll link to the YouTube playlist. Cheerbits. Cheerbits, Cheerbits in the stream. Quidian, Thanks Quidian, for the Cheerbits. What's up, Quidian? And it takes you Whoa. to the playlist. And there's like 26 videos here so far. And everything I've done, there's a video to explain it. What about the sounds? What about the magic shop rarity tables? What about the random monster tables? It's all here. Quidian, what's up? Quidian's here, everybody. Uh, so yeah, so it's all there, and then if I make a new thing, I'll just add it on. So, um, I hope that's what Drake was cheer asking bits. about. Cheerbits, cheerbits in the cheer stream, bits. thanks Fans for the cheerbits. College, cheerbits, it's a bit boss war, everybody. Well, so, you said DM Bundle 2, I don't know if that's the Nurzgul thing, oh, or... D DM Bundle 2, let me see if he means this. Hold on, did we so give away the prize? Store. We didn't give away Flash. the prize, did we? Let's do it. The winner of a kiss from me. Wait a minute. What's it called? The Madhouse of Tasha's Kiss. That's a little bit different than a kiss from me. Uh, <laughs> is Eraser Tex. What's up, Eraser Tex? You know what to do, buddy. <laughs> Eraser Tex has been with me, I don't know, since 2016. He's uh, <laughs> He's been around for a long time. Uh, so, yeah. So, Eraser Tex knows what to do to get that prize. Uh, let me go and just make a note, though, so that I don't, I don't forget. Tasha's kiss. I spelled it wrong. I don't care. I know what it means. Eraser text. So I think what Drake might be talking about is dungeon. I went through that whole explanation, and that's not what he wanted. Dungeon Masters Bundle 2. And then Fantasy Grounds version. This, I think, is what he's talking about. Did he say Dungeon Masters Bundle 2? Ooh. So, Drake, is this... Hey! Me, fifth, me Filthy. Me Fitty? What's it called? I didn't read it. <laughs> Mef, Mephity. Thanks for the follow. I, 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 I totally apologize if I screwed up your name. Um, okay, that is what Drake wants. So, yes. he wants me to explain this. Okay, so... <clears throat> this is from Andrew K. Wood. There's also Dungeon Masters uh, Bundle 1 as well. So what this is, is uh, Taverns and Inns Handbook, Traveler's Handbook, Stores Handbook, Dungeon Masters Handbook 1 and 2. So he, he it's, and it, it actually tells you what, what all's in it. And so I don't, I mean, beyond the description of what's there and, and actually pulling up the, you know, pu pulling it up in the, and showing it to you here, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're looking for me to explain, but I'd be happy to try. Uh, so he wants the, the store. The store's handbook, okay. He wants so to know how the store there. works, or show people how it works. Okay, so the stores, this is mainly for DMs, so... You go here, and then it's got general stores, it's got weapon stores, it's got armor stores, and it goes on and on. And so each one of these stores is just something you can drop right into your campaign in a city wherever you want it. And it tells you a description of what's in there, who the staff are, uh, what languages they speak, what their services are. These guys fix armor and make armor who their customers might be, and a price list. And it gives, you know, all the armors that they sell and what the prices are. So he's got, like, almost every conceivable thing in here. Uh, magic item stores, Jupiter Rising, 
they have these particular magic items and what their sale items are. So it's basically just for DMs that want to populate their cities or their hamlets or where, you know all, all their stuff with whatever they they want to have. Here's food stores. Um, here's uh, art stores, like an art store that might have paintings and and you know a carved bone statuette. And, I mean, so so you, basically it's just so you don't have to think. You're a DM. You want to populate shit. Uh, here's a shipwright and. They sell a galley, a, a flagship, a keel boat. I mean, it's basically everything to populate almost any D and D setting that you want. Music store. He's got all the instruments here and what they cost. So it's it's a pretty cool thing if you're looking for, and that's just the store's handbook. So the the bundle includes the store's handbook, inns and taverns, traveler's handbook. Dungeon Master's Handbook and Dungeon Master's Handbook 2. So it's got a lot of NPCs. And if you want to know, here, I'll put the link in the chat. If you want to know, like, all of what's included in that, there's the PDF version and the F and the Fan Scrums version. And it's got all the NPC stat box. It's got 500 NPC descriptions. So, you know, you're somebody says, you, you know, you're playing your game, and somebody says, oh, do we meet anybody on the road? You can real quick go get one of these 500 descriptions and say, yeah, you meet this guy. And, you know, so it's got it's just like a ton of information. I forget when I did it. Let me see if I can go over here and tell you. It was some kind of 400 pages or something. Let me see. Uh, documents. That was... Who's that? Kaywood? Yeah, Kaywood. Dungeon Master's Bundle 2. So, uh, let's see. 100 and, 180, 263... Yeah, it was, it was like 350 pages worth of stuff in all those. And we you, yeah, converted it. We converted it. I think... Uh, I think Walk Insides. Yep. Walking, walking sides helped me on that one too. So yeah, hopefully that's what you were looking for, Drake. He wanted the auto deduct from your uh, inventory when you buy stuff. I think he might. I don't know if that's part of that module, but I know the DOE locations does that. Auto deduct? No, this this module here doesn't have any functionality that does auto deduct. I, I don't. I don't okay. know what he's talking about. It's a DOE location one, does it? Oh, I remember so that, we yeah, did the, that. An, an extension. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, just bought the DM bundle too. <laughs> nice. Very good. Uh, RP Network says he's going to pick that up. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fantastic stuff on here. You know, I've, I've done about 45 or 50 things. But I have almost 100 things on the DMs Guild because the other half is stuff I've done with other people like this. You know, like I never even created this. This is just something I converted to Fantasy Grounds. But the, the mind behind it was Andrew Kaywood, right? So, uh, again, you can go... If you if you get that thing I was showing you earlier, the, the, uh, the Rob Tui module organizer, that's only going to show you uh, things that I've done. But there is a public... Uh, there is a public spreadsheet, which I have here. I will post it chat. This is also available on my Discord. If you come to my Discord and go to DMs Guild Updates, I think the link for this is... Ooh, no, it's not. It's in... Who the fuck is Rob Tui? It's right here. Uh, accomplishments and Current Projects. You click on that, and that's the link I just posted into the chat, and it takes you to this. And this is literally everything I've I've done from the... From the race ability modifiers and key class stats I did on January 29, 2016, all the way up through yesterday when I did the Madhouse of Tasha's Kish, Kish, and then Unknown Whom is coming out uh, Tuesday, and then Eberron Archetypes, Heroes of the Five Nations, and the Faithful of Eberron. The Faithful of Eberron is currently number one on the DMs Guild. Those are both in the works. So the fucking shit never stops, everybody. And you can go to any of these here, and I mean, it, it, I've got 92 DMs Guild items, 37 things in the Smiteworks store, five things on Drive Through RPG, and one comedy book on Amazon, and they're all here. So you just pick what you want. You go to, uh, you go to, uh, like what? Let's go to something. Eberron Solo Adventure, Savior of Sharn. You click on it, and it takes you right to the DMs Guild page. There it is. If you go to Creature Codex Lairs and click on it, it takes you to the Smiteworks store. 
So everything I've ever done is it links from that file. And there's two of you in here now looking at it. Oh, anonymous, anonymous Loris and anonymous Squirrel. Welcome, welcome, my friends. <laughs> so <laughs> please eat those. You know what? That's right. Eat your nuts. Store your nuts. And eat your nuts. <laughs> so, uh, any other questions, guys? Any questions for me? Any questions for Leroon or Furied? Questions about anything? I think we did a what? Did we had an hour and twenty minutes. Wow, nice. Gave away some prizes. Going to close Fantasy Grounds now. Somebody you got to yell at me today. Questions. I got to yell at you today. That's all part of it. Trying to get content out of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get some content out of me. Don't save. Uh, <laughs> oh, here's the... Uh, oh, I might as well put in episode 44. What is episode 44? Who? What's on next week? Oh, next week is Jake, I think. We're doing... Uh, did this, so we can copy this. We're doing next week uh, DM and player expectations. So we'll have Jake back again because he knows a, a lot about both sides. And uh, we'll answer your questions in regarding to that. Uh, and oh, he hasn't actually got back to me yet. Oh, well, that's fine. That's fine. So let's close that. And we are getting ready to, to shut it down, everybody. I will uh, I will maybe switch over to the slides. So I will be here for Module Creation Monday tomorrow, working on something. Uh, that Pathfinder slide is now not true. I could have swore I put in, you know, what I need to do is I need to change that to, I thought I did that already. What the hell? Pathfinder minus, we're going to add in. The, what's it called, everybody? It's called 5e Pickup Games. Is that what it's called? Oh, I need to be in Twitch, not YouTube. My files are so, I have so many. You know what's up. Mm -hmm. I don't. I was just making noises. That's good. Just, we, we just let us know noises. you're still here. Pretty much. Well, As I watched my little thing go from green to red to yellow to green. Oh, your, your voice connection? My connection. Yeah. So, uh, Wednesday will be 5e Pickup Games. There it is. Everybody's welcome to come and check it out. Uh, and if you don't if you don't play, we, we allow the, the Twitch XP things in there. All things possible in Twitch. All kind of monsters and traps and whatever the hell. And then we are going to get back on Friday. We are going to play, God damn it, after like three weeks of not playing. We're going to play uh, Tomb of the Thing. What's it called? Waterdeep. That's right. <laughs> and then Saturday. Yeah, you say it, but then it's it and we won't be able to play. Something will happen. Yeah, my, my, my fucking roof will cave in or some shit will happen and then we won't be able to play. Um, so good. Has anybody else got any questions? I don't think so. Check out the knowledge base on FGC. We have an article to complete a lot of the information. Okay. So I guess we're going to end it up. Any final words from you two people? Did you guys want to say anything? Do you want to announce your 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 social media? I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys want to say? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I was going to let people know that we are still building our website. We do plan to make an extensive database. And right now it's still in its infancy, but uh, we cover a lot of the topics. What we're trying to do is compile uh, the data that pertains to a certain subject. So if you got YouTube links uh, and you got forum links and you got links within people's discords, wherever that information is, we're trying to compile the information so you have one place to find it. So that's the goal. Oh, good. Uh... Also, Furied, what do you say? Oh, I was just thinking that Lay Range thing is very ambitious. Like, that's a big ass dictionary of like where to find shit. Who mm -hmm. or cheer bits, who. cheer bits in the stream. Yep. Thanks for the cheer bits. So I hope that goes well. Yeah, cheer bits, Drake, cheer bits. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, that is going to be awesome. And, and guys, I put the link in the chat for FGC. So, especially if you're new, uh, welcome by the way. If this is your first time watching Fantasy Grounds College. No, no. Fancy Grounds, all things, what's it called? It's the show, whatever. It's a Sunday night show. 
all things fancy, <laughs> stock show, whatever the fuck. Everything, everything has the word I'm fantasy grounds in it. Anymore. So it's just this bastardization of 18 different phrases rammed together when it comes out of my mouth. Especially if you haven't, you know, if you're backed up and you haven't shit for five days. I'm just kidding, I have. Um, anyway, yeah, go to the F, uh, fantasygroundscollege.net is the website. That'll connect you to their Discord, but also you'll be able to see what Leyrin's talking about. Um, so good. I guess we'll, uh, we'll shut her down and everybody can hang tight for the cool outro that we have now. And we will, uh, come back next week for episode 44, which is going to be player and DM perspectives. I don't know. I've already forgotten the name of it. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. (laughs) Actually expectations. Yeah. Expectations. You're right. I'm just closing everything down. Yeah, it's it's DM and player expectations. And Jake McCarthy, who was here a few weeks ago, he was here about six weeks ago, five weeks ago. He, he'll be here with us. And uh, and then uh, on the 11th, I will be running a game on that Sunday prior to the show from like about 3 to 6 o'clock. And then we'll have those players in – uh on the show after like we did that once before yeah it's number two we did that once before way back up here uh a few months ago so we'll be doing that and then uh after after uh, two weeks we'll we'll uh do some of these other topics and 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 always remember guys if you have a topic that you want us to uh to do um hey for 44 you're welcome buddy thank you uh then yeah you know uh, either PM one of the three of us uh, or whatever, and let us know, and we'll we'll get we'll get a we'll put it on the list and see if we can get it done for you, because we've covered a lot. I mean, we're approaching fifty shows, you yeah. guys. I mean, and I mean, it doesn't have to be just any topic. If you know somebody who did some really cool content for Fantasy Grounds, you know, let us know. Maybe we can hunt them down, harass them until they come onto the show, and be like, "Hey, this is what I've made. Look, everybody." Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I I'm pretty bad anyway. about that. Like I I just assume. That anybody that wants to be on the show will will approach me and say, "Hey, can I come on and talk about this?" And a few people have, <laughs> like Geo has, and and Dave Dave did, and and then and I also I also will ask people, but I don't hound them relentlessly like a PR agent, you know. I I don't like go after them. And I ask will. Them. Yeah, Fury will do that. I do. But but if you guys, <laughs> uh, you know, I I am you know somebody has something legit, like you know some sometimes people do you send me a PM or an email saying, Hey, can I be on the show? And then I'll email them. Yeah. What do you got? And they'll be like, no, I just want to be on. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to have something to talk about. Uh, and unless we, you know, we've had one or two shows where it was just bullshit on purpose, like, you know, the goon squad or whatever. But, um, yeah, if you, if, if, if you know of anybody that has like Fury said, created some awesome fancy grounds content or has done extensions, like we got to get, uh, we got to Celeste, yeah, we got to get Ken L. We got to get Celestian back because uh, he just keeps making, you know, like an extension every three days. And when Shad finishes his uh, OBS thing, we're going to definitely showcase that. So we'll hopefully have him on and talk about that. that, that I don't know how what his timeline is on that. Might be a while. Um, cool. But yeah, and, so you know, in a voice chat. In a voice chat. That's right. And uh, so yeah, so good. So I guess that's it, everybody. If there's no more questions, I want to thank everybody. Uh, congrats to the prize winners. And uh, if you haven't, please please go to my YouTube and and subscribe because I'm I'm approaching a thousand now. It used to be a it used to be very far off, and now it's within reach. I have like 930 subscribers, so it's getting close. Um, and I usually don't do this on Sunday night, but what the hell? We'll give everybody and end of stream 100 gold pieces because the wednesday game and the friday game you can use your xp in the chat to affect the game so uh you can use gold to build up your xp in addition to just hanging out in the chat also guys don't forget that you can uh come to our discord uh you can go to the discord for fgc as well uh you can go to our patreon pages fgc has patreon i have a patreon you can subscribe to the channel if you're if you're a person who has Amazon Prime, like a lot of people do. Uh, you can subscribe for free. So if you didn't know that, you can donate to the channel if you if that's your thing. That's uh, I appreciate it if you do. You can peruse my items that I have for sale on the DMs Guild. 
and I will actually check to see what we've sold in the DMs Guild today and give you guys a number. I know Drake just got the uh, Dungeon Masters bundle too. Also, you can uh, follow me on Twitter if you're there and subscribe to me on YouTube. And waiting for the thing to refresh. It might take a minute. I always, I always like to joke with myself or play a little game where the longer it takes to refresh, that means I've sold a billion things and it can't count them all. But usually that's not true. <laughs> and I will be back here tomorrow night, guys, working on uh, something. Uh, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11 things sold on the DMs Guild so far. Still two and a half hours left in the day. Uh, so good to go. All right, guys. Um, on behalf of my wonderful, friendly co-hosts, uh, Furied Fate and Laroon, I want to thank everybody for coming by tonight. Uh, hope to see you back here Sunday and every Sunday. And uh, until we meet again, good gaming, everyone.